it used to be these stories were what drove me to the brink of madness. Now, these seem almost benign. Oh. Don't they? In comparison to, you know, the actual fucking world right now? Sometimes, sometimes not so much. Like, Fair enough. People throwing their own poop is never going to be benign to me. <laughs> That's true. People using guns as, like, remote controls... Never gonna be cool. That's true. That's fair. Can I tell you the thing about Memphis? It seems like it's really hard to get food that isn't fried shit. Like, I'm not a health nut. He has to struggle to get me to eat a vegetable, but by the end of it, I was like, oh my god, I just want something that isn't breaded and fried. Like, I can't, I can't live like this. There's even, we, we even have hush puppies. Which are essentially breaded, fried bread. Yeah, like why? <laughs> so we've already we've got the bread. Now we have more bread that we're gonna fry the bread in. Yeah. And that's we did go to a really good barbecue place one day. Oh, that's good. But uh that was probably the best food we had. Cause the hotel restaurant was like a bunch of fried shit and then vegetables that were the kind of the same color. That's the fried shit. <laughs> and that was a little dodgy, so. Yeah. Oh, okay. Let's let's get the story. Oh, yeah, we yeah, let's get the stories going. Holy moly. There we go. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment. We like to call what the fuck is wrong with you? And we're launching our very first story this week. We're right out of the gate. We got Vidya. Ooh. Don't don't go woo. Don't woo this. Oh. Here we go. Here's the Vidya. I'll send you the story. This happened along I-95 in Miami. What you're seeing there is a dude hanging on to the roof of a car at full highway speeds. In, like, his underwear. Yes. Oh, my God. That's so not safe. 70 miles an hour. Like, how is he keeping those flip-flops on, though? <laughs> that's talent. That's, Seriously. That's talent. Oh my god, what the f what happened? All right, okay. Black Panther 2 is looking <laughs> kind of dodgy on the stunts, huh? Oh, so so here's 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 what happened. Um video shows man it's riding a of car. Never mind. Video shows man riding on hood of car speeding down I-95 because Miami. Witness quote, she is definitely pissed off at him or something. You think? If you're worried local residents work, work working hard enough to create special, quote, only in Miami moments, you don't know Miami well enough. Case in point, a man riding the hood of a car while traveling down I-95. Like anything more really needs to be said. It's weird how calm he looks. <laughs> He's just like, this is happening now, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I guess... What are you going to do at that point? Panicking is not going to help you, but, like, he looks weirdly calm. I bet you're wondering how I got into this situation. <laughs> While the man was sprawled in the hood of the car, the car was hitting speeds of 70 miles per hour. I, as, all I, quote, this is from the guy who took the video, all I was thinking is, that guy is either slide off and hit me, or slide off on the other side, or if anything, he's going to slide down and she's going to hit him, and she's going to crash into somebody else. Did they ever find out, like, who they are or why? The car and extra passenger eventually exited Ivesbury Road, at which time might have called 911. He said he believes the man riding the hood was on the phone with the woman who was driving the car. Quote, he didn't even look like he was freaked out by what was going on, but I was freaking out. 
Um, local news uh, ten. Okay. Local 10 News has reached out to Florida Highway Patrol to see whether they are investigating the incident. <laughs> so this is just a thing that happened. This is one of those moments in life. You look over, and all of a sudden, the car next to you, there's a guy on the fucking hood. That happened with a cat, like, two weeks ago. These people did, took off in their minivan, and they didn't realize that the cat was asleep on top of the car until they were on the highway going full speed and the poor cat's hanging on for dear life and, like, people waved them down. <laughs> poor kitty. Well, but this is a little different than a cat. This seems, this seems intentional. Yeah. Didn't know the cat was up there. This, this kind of, kind of deliberate. But, like, he looks like this is just another Tuesday for him. Yeah. <laughs> He was very chill about the whole thing, I have to yeah. say. I admire his decorum and and, and civility. I mean, I mean, yeah. That dude is a fucking badass. <laughs> I mean, whatever. Especially if he's on the phone with her, because that means he's hanging on with one hand. Wh whatever argument they were having, he won. I feel like he didn't if he wound up on the hood of the car while he was driving on the highway. Yeah, but pretty much if you're driving, if you have got someone trapped on the hood of your car in a dispute, you've pretty much lost the argument. I don't think so. <laughs> I think you're negotiating from a position of strength. <sighs> Luckily, the hood of my car is not big enough for a person to be on because I drive a roller skate. So Dan doesn't have to worry about that. <laughs> and I won't drive his car cause it's too fancy. Oh. Well, my car cause it's too fancy, but you'd happily have me on your hood. No, cause my hood's too small. Yeah, but that's only because it's I'd too run small, over your, because you like I'd run over your feet. Only if you deserved it. Uh -huh. Oh, let's let's move on to oh good god damn it. This store does so they frustrate me. Woman trashes restaurant, hits owner's car after receiving wrong food order. Bit of an overreacts overreaction. Louisiana woman was arrested for allegedly trashing a Chinese restaurant hitting the owner's vehicle after her food order was, quote, not made properly. According to a police report released Monday, the customer, identified police as 20-year-old Jasmine Thompson, uh, visited China King in Seidel, Louisiana, last Thursday. Thompson reportedly became irate at employees <laughs> after her food was not made properly. Um, Thompson began throwing utensils and sauces around the restaurant, while yelling racial slurs at the staff. All right. I've had times when I've ordered a meal and it has not been to my liking. Yeah. Say the steak was a little undercooked. Say maybe something was a little cold coming out of the oven. That or they happens. just gave you the wrong thing. Or you get the wrong thing. And I, it happens. You handle this by saying, pardon me, waiter. I don't mean to trouble you. Uh, this is not what I ordered. You don't handle this with racism! Or violence. That's not the way to get the right food. That's a good way to get jail and spit in your food. It's, if, if you're starting Don't to, fuck with the people who control your food. If, if you're starting off, if your first go-to move when you're not getting the food you like the way you want it, is racism. Yeah. I, it's, I'd say, I would, I was going to say you, you've escalated to the top, but no, you've jumped off the escalator. You're hanging onto the side, dangling by your fingertips. Speeding down the asshole highway. Oh, it, it gets even better. As Thompson fled the restaurant, she hit the owner's car with her own vehicle. And do you want the cherry on top? Thompson was stopped by police and charged with criminal damage, disturbing the peace, 
hit and run, and not having insurance. <sighs> so, had she not gone through all of this, not only should, would she not have been arrested, she wouldn't have been arrested for not having insurance. Right. All the rest of that stuff's pretty bad, but the not having insurance, that's one of those ones they'll, they'll your license go bye bye Yeah. <sighs> and you still didn't have your food. And you just still haven't gotten your food. Because if you flip the fuck out and wreck the place, they're not going to replace your food. That's not a thing that's no, going to happen. It's not going to be like, oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. We'll you get your what? low main. No problem. You know what? I really see your point of view now. Let me comp you. Actually, in a lot of places, that will happen. <sighs> yeah. Any place at the chain, that's, that's probably what's going to happen. Yeah. Just, these poor people. They didn't deserve... They're just... They, yeah, okay. Shit happens, yes. man. Like, mistakes happen. Yes. Hey, you know what baffles me? This normally this doesn't normally come from people who are like an upper status who don't understand what retail and service industry is like. This comes <laughs> from people who are kind of in the same service industry along with them too. As as someone who worked in very high end retail for a while, yes, it does. It does. Which and that would make sense, but it doesn't make Rich sense. Rich people to me. are fucking terrible. But it, does, it doesn't make sense to me when it comes from people who also work in the service yeah, industry. Yeah, that's when it's like, you should know better. You should, you you, should fucking know better. You deal with this shit. Man, I've worked in retail. I've worked in the service industry before. And all that yeah. has made me is like, I, I don't want to put any undue strain or stress on anybody. Like, I will tell you, nothing made me more patient with Starbucks than working for three months at Starbucks. I worked there for three months because I couldn't fucking hack it and I quit. I put in my two notice, like I quit properly, but like I couldn't fucking hack it at Starbucks. So now like if something gets a little fucked up, if my drink's not exactly right, if it takes too long, I'm like, you know what? This job is really fucking hard. Yeah. Cut them some slack. It's cool. Oh, okay. Now I, I this this story is awful. But I do want to give the uh, the author of the story credit for um, a very a nice retro hipster reference very early. It's it's one of those you younger folks might not get this one, but uh, Florida man breaks into former residence, threatens to kill occupants, steals pulled pork sandwich. Okay. And the opening line of the story. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like it sounds like a real life reenactment of the bare naked lady song The Old Apartment with a twist. That's a good reference. It is. You should play that song next. I God, I'm gonna have to, aren't I? A Florida man broke into his former home. Except in the song he steals the dish rack. <laughs> Not a sandwich threatened the new resident and stole a pulled pork sandwich and energy drink from the refrigerator before running into the woods. What the fuck? Alex Sardinas, 35, of uh, Tavernier, apparently forced his way into the Florida Keys resident using a pocket knife. He's been charged with assault, burglary, and theft. The narrow dead-end road la lined with a ramshackle collection of small block homes and apartments juts into the wooded midsection of the, Pennsylvania, uh, the peninsula near Dove Sound. After breaking in, Sardinus began screaming and threatening to kill the new apartments, I mean, new occupants, because he was not allowed to live there anymore. That, that happens sometimes. That's... Especially if you're a psychotic. That's not their fault. No. If, if you get kicked out of living in a place and someone else moves into that place, it's not their fault you got kicked out of the place. They don't even know you. Nope. It is not their problem. All they know of you is, is the stains you left. Yeah. That's, that's all their knowledge of you is. And your poor choices of paint colors. I can't live here because you food. Like, what the fuck is that? All right, I can't live here. I'm gonna take your barbecue. 
You're just gonna go through their fridge? Like, who does that? Reparations! I still ask if I can get some water at my sister's house, and I lived there for a year. And she's like, Tara, you lived here for a year, just get a glass of water. And I'm like, but I don't live here anymore. Oh, even better. Um, the sheriff's office said Sardinas called them at midnight, saying he needed to get his clothes from the house. This is after he'd already broken in. He was later they're found... They're not there anymore. No, they're not. He was later found walking along a nearby road about a few dozen yards from the scene of the crime. Like this was all going to be okay. Yeah. No. Like you did a normal thing. I'm starting to understand why you don't live there anymore. No shit! You sound like a problem tenant. A little bit. Because if you think that breaking in with a pocket knife, waving it around at people, and then stealing their pork is a sense, and then you're just sensibly like walk down the street, you know, I should call the police. And like at any point while he was there, did he mention that he was there to pick up his shit, which was almost certainly not there? No. He just. Why would you think it would be if someone else lives there now? He just threatened to kill them. Yeah, you know, that's... Because I've been known to just rattle off a death threat where I'm going to pick up my stuff. Sure. That's a good thing to do. Stealing their pork sounds like a euphemism. Arkle, no, in this case, it's actually not. It's quite literal. He stole their pork. <sighs> they should rewrite that song. It's the old apartment. Broke into the old apartment, took a pulled pork sandwich. No. <laughs> oh, now it's it's time for a recurring feature on our show. Let's make Dan angry. Um, this is a follow up. You mean you mean my cuckbend? <laughs> <laughs> my sad servile beta cuckbend? Yeah, yeah, that. Yeah. <clears throat> This is a follow-up story. Do you remember a, a few weeks ago we had a military group that completely just lost grit, like our shells, armament, yeah, explosives? Yeah. They oh, just did they turn off? No. Oh god. Uh no, actually it kind of got worse. Missing more? That missing machine gun from Minot turned up in the worst possible place. What is the worst possible place, Nash? The missing machine gun. The missing machine gun that triggered the firing of Security Forces Chief at Minot Air Force Base, North Dakota, turned up and was probably the last place the Air Force wanted it to. Stashed in an airman's home off base. Minot officials announced on Wednesday that the machine gun had been recovered by Air Force Office of Special Investigation Agents. Uh, the machine gun was discovered missing during a standard weapons inventory by the 91st Missile Wing, uh, just two weeks after airmen with the same unit reportedly lost a bottle of MK, a uh, box of MK-19 grenades out the back of a moving vehicle. I wonder where those grenades are. Security Chief Colonel Jason Beers was fired on May 23rd due to a loss of trust and confidence after a series of events under the scope of his leadership including the loss of ammunition and weapons. The question remains, why did this un unnamed airman steal an M240 in the first place? Was he just some dumb kid bored as hell with his posting at Minot and in search of some recreational fun? Or a budding arms trafficker? It's not clear, but either way, it's not looking great for anyone involved. So apparently the security folks with this, with, with this outfit are just losing heavy fucking ordnance and grenades yeah. left and right. Place. What did we what did we misplace today? A nuclear missile? <laughs> that's Jeez. that's not a big fuck. And I, I just I'm going to show you when we say a machine gun, we don't mean like an AK forty seven or something. Oh. It's a belt-fed fucking light machine gun. Yeah, that's that that's the picture of an M240. It's it's a it's one of those ones that it's has, called a saw. It's called a saw for a reason, yes. It's not an automatic weapon. Oh. 
Yes. I was like, why is so- oh. Yeah, not that kind of soft. Dan looks red on the feet. It's because he's wearing a red jacket. Oh. He usually wears blue. Yeah, this thing is normally tripod mounted or mounted on a on a vehicle. This is not yeah, one you carry it around. Feeds, like from a big row of giant shells. Like, do you remember like, that? You don't need this at home. Do you remember that scene in Predator where they just completely decimated the jungle? Yeah, they just see Dan's with me on this one. He knows that. They well, just, yeah. yeah, that that was an M sixty, but still just as bad. Yeah. But seriously, I think we should start flipping airmen's homes for those lost grenades that fell off a truck. <laughs> fell out the back of it. They literally... Well, like, what's terrifying apparently, about... these people are just taking <laughs> fucking souvenirs. What's terrifying about that is the Mark 19 is a belt-fed grenade launcher. So I'm wondering if maybe there's a fucking Mark 19 grenade launcher hanging out someplace. The... Awesome. The... Where it's... is this? North Dakota. Hey, well, I'm glad I don't live there. Yeah, but the t they do <laughs> they do border Canada. So if you're in Canada above North Dakota, um, duck and cover. Yeah. Cause uh, yeah. What do you think, buddy? What do you think? He's like, I think they're fucking stupid. Yeah, he does. <laughs> And he would be right. <laughs> is the dog out there? Because he is on high alert. <laughs> he does that sometimes. What are you doing? Somebody was asking if Simba's home yet. No, he's going to come home in the next couple weeks. Yeah. He's on um, a required 10-day quarantine because he gave someone a bad bite. And, like, animal control got involved. So he can't come home right away. Because it's like a, Hi. I guess, if the your doctor reports it, they have to go on rabies watch, and they know he doesn't have rabies because they vaccinate, but it's like a thing. So, well, you missed a a, a, a forklift story last week, but don't worry, uh -oh. we got another forklift story this week. They're just coming out of the fucking woodwork, aren't they? Anchorage, Alaska. Man who drove front end loader erratically through East Anchorage charged with DUI. Man, it's just tough being Todd Palin these days, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well done. Shit's gotten that boring. An Anchorage man seen erratically driving a front end loader that he took from his workplace was charged with driving under the influence. Great. Okay. Thank you. Daniel L. Hewitt, 35, was in custody Wednesday at the Anchorage jail. Three people called police separately to report that someone was driving the front end loader erratically in East Anchorage. 7.05 p.m., police got a call that a person driving a front end loader had pulled into the Chevron gas station and nearly hit the building. Caller told police the driver, later identified as Hewitt, Went inside the gas station dis displaying signs of intoxication, bought something, and drove off again. How fast can those things go? 20 miles an hour, 20, <laughs> 30, maybe. Why would this be the thing you would choose to just drive around town? Not only that, he was he got this from his workplace drunk. I don't think you work there anymore. No, he was. So you got drunk. I don't know. Did he get drunk at work and just decide, you know what? I'm not taking the Mazda home today. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it says it's going to snow later. Or I, I just, I'll just take the forklift. That'll work out better for everybody. Because then if it snows, I can just drive into work anymore. Right. And I'll be fine. Won't have to call out. Yeah, it's just it's right. I'm th I'm thinking ahead. I'm being a team player. Yes. I want I yes. God damn it. Just I, I'm just trying to get myself in the mindset of how drunk I need to be. Just to be rolling yeah. along. 
They see me rolling. They hating. I mean, you were as drunk as I've ever seen you on Friday, and I don't think you were steal a forklift drunk. No. You were take your pants off with the hotel room door. <laughs> <laughs> like he, I leave in the room. He and I have the door open, and he starts just taking his boxes. <laughs> Dan, I have the door open, and he looks up at me, boxers around his ankles, dick out, and goes, okay. And I'm like... <laughs> you didn't give me a directive. You just stated an opinion. <laughs> okay, that's what I was looking for. You I stated thought, a fact. The I door thought, is open. I oh, thought okay. maybe you might want to cover your business, <laughs> but I'll just close the door faster. Instead, <laughs> so I have in fact seen Dick out in public drunk. <laughs> in, not really public, but almost. <laughs> Hit a lot of whiskey that night. <laughs> oh, and our final for telling that story. No. Okay. Our final story this week: just complete fucking nanners. Um, this one comes from, uh, Dofunac Springs. I think I'm saying that right. Defuniac, Defuniac, Defuniac Springs. Drunk Amvet's patron chases others, claims to be daughter of God. Oh. For a 49-year-old woman who got so drunk in a local bar, she was chasing other patrons around the parking lot charged with battery and pump and disorderly intoxication. The Walton County Sheriff's Office was called to the AMVETS bar uh, to help manage the woman. Patrons told the deputy she'd hit one man who's trying to defend himself. She was outside the bar when the deputy arrived. Two men said she attacked one of them and was acting crazy. She'd been asked to leave the bar. When she was being escorted out, she started chasing one of the patrons. One of the witnesses said that he and another man we're running around the cars to keep her away from them. When she was escorted out of the bar, several patrons followed the group to make sure nothing happened. Bullshit, you were going to watch. <laughs> you were placing bets to make sure nothing. When she charged at one of them, she screamed she was a daughter of God. Well, first, which one? I'm thinking Dionysus. Dionysus, yeah. Yeah, that's that's the... Oh, I... Like, wow. You, that is... Oh, Jessica Christ, motherfucker! <laughs> that, that's a little impressive, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. At 49. She had the whole place on the run? Like, she went fucking feral. I mean, I'm just a little over 40. And even I, you get me kind of drunk, I'm like, I'm sleepy now. <laughs> I'm going, I'm not like, I'm going to fight all y'all motherfuckers in the parking lot. She's almost 50. She's going to kick everyone's ass. Yeah. I just steal shit from people when I get really <laughs> drunk. I don't know. I steal shit. I don't know why. Oh. Yeah, I just take shit because I think it's hilarious. So that if I'm ever drunk around you and the next morning I'm missing something, I should just call you. Well, no, because I want to like rub it in your face that I stole it a lot. Like I want you to know, like it's gonna, like I'm gonna be like, ha ha, have your phone. Look, I took your phone. You can't have it because I'm the worst. Then why do you keep doing it? I don't that much. I don't. I don't. I don't drink that much. Oh, I very man. rarely get kleptomaniac drunk. I just. I. This. This is like a Benny Hill sequence. Yeah. Like. Like what was in that booze? <laughs> was that booze yeah. by the Umbrella Corporation? Hmm. That sounds. I just. I have not gotten. I. I, I'm just a little bit impressed. 
Because when I'm drunk, I can barely walk in a straight line, much less run around whooping asses. I mean, technically, to be fair, did she actually whoop any asses or did everybody successfully evade her? Well, she tried. She hit one dude. Okay. She tried. I'm giving her credit for the for the the, the, the fucking I've given her credit for the attempt. Cause I know what it's like for me. I'm like <laughs> You know, I'm I can't even I I will walk in a circle before I walk in a straight line. I will circumnavigate well, the entire she was room. Running around the cars because she couldn't run in a straight line. But she could zigzag. <laughs> Maybe the mistake they made was just not running in a straight line away from her. I'm pretty sure you don't. This this is why you don't take God's name in vain. Not because he's really concerned about it, but because when you get his attention, he's just like, oh, fuck, what are you idiots doing now? <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, I didn't tell it. you to oh. do that. Like, how much time do you think God and Jesus spend up there just being like, I didn't tell you to do that. What? No. What? what? This is that. Why are you? I do not need the blame for this shit. Seriously, I I don't care if you eat meat on a fry. Why would I care when you have a cheeseburger? I don't care. Don't don't murder and steal. Was the idea like? And you're definitely. I mean, technically, yes, you're all my children, but you're not my direct daughter. And please stop beating all those men up. I think the first thing we learned this week is is that when you get this drunk, leave God out of it. I mean, I'm Irish, so I can't adhere to that entirely. Because the Irish are known to be real fucking philosophical when they're drunk. So... Still leave God. Just try. Just leave him alone. He has enough. But yeah, to worry about. like don't blame it on him. He has enough to worry about right now. Yeah. Um, He's busy. We've learned that uh, a front loader is not a good vehicle, especially when you're drunk. That is an exceptional and DUI. And you're not as subtle as you think you are stealing it from your job. No, they they they're kind. People are gonna notice. In fact, you're gonna, everyone. You're gonna, yeah, you're gonna get caught. Everyone noticed. Um, we've learned if you're in North Dakota, um, head on a swivel, people, because uh, yeah. <laughs> the you should you should practice your evasive maneuvers. <laughs> There's loose military arms, and they're being taken by the airmen, airmen so... Yeah. Okay. Um, Wear a helmet. We've learned that once you've been evicted, and you go back, you can't be angry at the people who live there now. That's not how it works. They're not involved. Don't you and your apartment are never getting back together. Like, ever. Don't steal their pork. You gotta That's move on. rude. Yeah. Um, we've learned that trashing a restaurant and driving into the owner's car is not going to fix your food. Yeah, no. It's not only will your food will your food still suck, but you'll also be in jail, and the food there is much worse. Much and they don't really care if they fuck up your order. No, they don't. They actually don't care if they fuck your order. Yeah. So like, you get what you get. And then some sometimes. Um and finally we've learned sometimes you'll be driving down the highway in Miami and look over and there's a dude on someone's hood, and that's just Florida. That's just that's just life down there. And even he won't seem to think it's strange. He's he's like, well, that Hey, what are you gonna do? It's Florida, right? Bitches, am I right? <laughs> like ladies. 
if, if you really want to kill your man, you don't want to do it like in public like that. <laughs> Just saying, be smart about that shit. Gotta be a little subtle. 